Hi there everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I have here my grandpa's blasting machine. Now this thing is what you'd probably see a cartoon character using to set off dynamite. You press the plunger. I've actually used this myself several times to set off explosions, and today I'm going to show you guys how it works. So for starters, this thing is actually a human-powered electrical generator. You see I've got this light bulb hooked between the two terminals, and when I depress the plunger, you can see the light flashed for just an instant as this was coming down to the bottom of a stroke. In fact, I think it's burned out the bulb. Yes, it has burned out the bulb. This generator, as old as it is, produces quite a substantial amount of power. I have eight Christmas lights here. Let's turn off the lights in the room so we can see them a little bit better. Now we just got a little bit of light coming in the window. Now when I depress this, you can see it lit up all the lights very brightly. Let's see if they'll uh, work again. So yeah, with that many lights, it doesn't just blow it out because it uh, kind of spreads out the power between them. This thing, uh, as far as I can tell, puts out between 60 and 100 volts uh, DC. Um, I don't really have a meter here that can measure it properly, but I do know that Having your hand on this while it's being depressed hurts a lot. And I very much suspect that if you had one hand on each of these and somebody pushed that down, it'd be potentially lethal. So, not something to fool around with. I imagine the reason why the voltage is so high is because, well, you don't want to be very close to your explosives. So you have your explosive charge and the generator, you want to have a long wire between them. And with long wires, you get a lot of line loss and the voltage will drop, so you want to start with a very high voltage. Also, if you are doing a long string of blasting caps, you want a high voltage so that every one of them will go off down the line. So what this electric charge was used for was for setting off blasting caps, which, of course, are what is needed to get dynamite to detonate. So, let's uh, replace this out with a fresh bulb here, and I will turn this into what is essentially a blasting cap. A blasting cap is kind of like a light bulb, but instead of an envelope with an inert gas or a vacuum, it is replaced with something explosive, something that can be ignited just by a hot wire, such as gunpowder or uh, mercury fulminate. Let's just uh, put a little bit of black powder down in there, if I can get this to uh, set off this little pile of powder here. All right, so in three, two, one. There you go. As you can see, it set off the power. This thing needs good cleaning anyway. All right, so to begin our tour, the uh, terminals here, one is made out of brass, the other is made out of steel. You can see with these magnets, magnets are attracted to this one, but not this one. I am fairly certain that this is actually not intended. Uh, originally, this probably came with two brass nuts. This one looks like a repair, like it got damaged at some point and somebody's fixed it. So over here is the uh, strap, the leather strap. I think this is probably the original leather strap that came with it. So this is uh, what you use to carry it with. Uh, this one is, you can see, is very old and weathered and is actually broken. I will be replacing this at some point. Looks like it'd be fairly easy. All I gotta do is just undo these three screws on either side and then put a new strip of, strip of leather in there. So uh, here's the uh, plunger handle. Pull this up, you can see it's got teeth right in here. So there's uh, some gears down in there that take the power off of this plunger when you shove it down. You can hear that noise, you can hear the uh, gears whirring. We'll get in there and look at those in a minute. The case itself is made out of wood. You can see you got some dovetailing around on the sides here and the internal workings are screwed in right there. So now if I tip it over here on the side, you can see all these screws and these are actually steel. That tells me this is probably a little bit of a newer version. The older ones would have had uh, brass screws. Okay, last screw. We've got this front cover here. Pull this off and you can see the dynamo generator right here. Look at that monster. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So, 
if you look back here, I, I probably should open the other side first. You can see, if I pull this out, it just sort of ratchets. You can hear the ratcheting noise. And then I push it back, it gets into gear. You can actually see the little ratchet lever back in there. And if I can get the light to go back in there. Now when I push it down, it spins this up and produces electrical power. So you see here, up uh, out of screen, there's a yellow uh, connector here. I didn't put that there, but that looks new. I mean, compared to the uh, fabric wrapped wires here, that's significantly newer. So somebody has definitely done something with this. Also, you can see, it certainly looks like a carriage bolt. Now, uh, while I'm over here, I can already kind of see where it's getting its super high voltage from. You see the power coming off of each of the terminals from the generator. There's uh, two wires. This wire goes back into the generator, you see that? So that's telling me that there's uh, using some of the electricity that this is producing to further excite the field and generate more and more uh, magnetic flux inside of there and generate more and more electricity, basically. So it, every time it goes through it increases the voltage. So uh, you can see the wood here on the back is split, so this comes off in two pieces. It's not really hurting anything. It's not like this thing was watertight. Although, there is some like caulk around here. You see there's some remnants of it. So maybe at one point it was watertight. Okay, so here we are. You can see this big gear and a little gear over here. This is the one that's actually on the dynamo. So when this goes around just a couple of times, this one goes around quite a few times. Uh, if you look around here on the back, you can see the there's a little pinion gear that rides along this rack. This uh, right through here would be the rack. And so this uh, rolls along and then transfers the motion into this, which kind of steps up the speed into here. So it makes this uh, dynamo go really fast. You see that? Let me uh, check something real quick. That is not steel. It kind of looks like aluminum. Huh. I guess aluminum would make it lightweight. This one here is definitely brass. I mean, this thing is already quite heavy. So there's some, uh, looks like somebody's carved some initials down in here. I have no idea what that is. Um, I don't recognize the initials for anything. Let me show you something that's really cool about this. We've got this uh, rack bar that goes up, it comes down, it gets the uh, dynamo spinning really fast, the uh, electrical power goes back through it multiple times, you know, it's a high potential field there, and then this bar comes down through there, all the way down to the bottom and it hits a little wedge that pushes this bar into this other metal bar here. And this completes the circuit from the dynamo to the electrical connections. So basically what this does is it makes it so this generator spinning at a full speed before it makes electrical contact. That way it's generating the maximum amount of voltage, the maximum amount of power that it can possibly do. And since it's only designed to put out for a very short amount of time, you know, a short pulse, that's all it needs. <laughs> now the question is, do I want to take this apart the rest of the way? Yeah, well, I've come this far. Let's do it. Let's just pull these screws out of the side here. Now, these have never come out as far as I know, so that's going to be a little harder to turn. Hopefully, I don't break something. Yeah, assuming all goes well, this thing should come out of this better than it went in. Because I'll clean everything as I'm putting it back together. Okay, just slowly work this loose so I don't break anything. Doesn't appear to be glued in. Oh, it is a staple right there. Alright. So. Yeah, you can see this side on now. A little bit better. So this here, that's cast iron. And this uh, front piece, that's aluminum too. Look at that. I guess it makes sense. I mean, they did have airplanes at this point, right? This was just 
pre-World War II or during World War II, so you know, they, they definitely had aluminum, just would have been expensive, I guess. Ah, came. Doesn't look like I broke anything. See, now you can see the pinion gear properly. See how it rolls along the rack. See, now you can see the uh, ratcheting mechanism a little more clearly. See this little arm that flips out whenever I pull it back. But when I push it forward, it engages and it causes the whole thing to spin. So it's got a little spring here holding tension on it. Yeah, very simple. Okay, so it looks like to get this apart, I've got to take this gear off. So let's uh, pull this cotter pin right here out. Definitely make sure not to lose that. Should just pull right out. Oh, something just sprung. Oh, it's not a problem. It's just the uh, ratcheting mechanism. There's the pinion gear. A whole bunch of stale grease. It's probably good to get that out of there. Let's see, can this rack just pull out now? Yeah, there it is. Okay. It looks like pretty sure I just removed these two screws. Okay, yeah, those are screws that go all the way through. Let's see. Does this have brushes? Oh yeah, those are brushes. Let's just see if the whole thing will come out. Uh oh, it comes. I just heard the brushes snap out. There it is. Look at that. That thing's old. It's almost like nothing in there is magnetic. I guess uh, back then they didn't really have strong ceramic or especially not the neodymium magnets we got today. So this is literally just magnetized iron. What this is is an electric coil, which is wrapped in a cloth by the way, going around the magnet, which is going to turn this into an electromagnet, building its strength. And the, the magnetic flux is kind of like pulling the electrons through the wire. So the stronger the magnetic field in here, the stronger it will get here, which has a feedback, which makes it stronger here. Look at that. Using magnets that are not even strong enough to hold up a screw. So those are actually some pretty thin wires there. And I guess it really doesn't need to take that much current, does it? I'm going to put this thing back together. Oh, would you look at that? That's not something you see on modern day motors. This uh, brush housing, you can just pull it all the way out and that doesn't fly across the room. Now I can just put the armature back in at my leisure without having to gobble them up with grease or hold them in with a pair of pliers or anything. Slide that in. Put those back into place. And that is that is downright easy. The generator here is very similar to an electric motor, uh, like a little DC electric motor, like you'd find in a remote-controlled car or something. If you ever take one of those and spin it with your fingers, with your uh, tongue over the contacts, you can actually feel the electrical shock that it puts out. You know, it makes sense that uh, if you do the reverse of what it normally does, you know, instead of putting electricity in and getting motion out, if you put motion in, you get electricity out. Same thing that's happening here, except uh, it's uh, got some very clever winding set up so that it generates very high voltages. Just like that. Pinion gear. It's got a little uh, metal plate right here that the uh, bottom of the plunger bar slams into. I think this would be made out of rubber or something so it would absorb the shock, but looks like it handles it. I just love how simple this thing is. I mean, like, modern versions of this that have the uh, you know, all the electronics and stuff, the capacitors, the batteries, 
the key that you have to turn before pushing the button. This has got none of that. Arguably this is less safe because there's less things you have to do to get the explosives to go off. But I would argue this is actually pretty safe because in order to get this to go off you have to run this down rather fast and it has to go all the way down. So if you have a bird or something land on here it's not going to do anything. You have something land on it and it bumps it down a little bit it's not going to do anything. You have to get a nice good full swing Otherwise, it doesn't make any power. I probably ought to loosen those brushes up just a little bit. Seems a little tight. Yeah, it's a little better. I mean, this thing is pretty much obsolete, especially for like my purposes. So, you know, if you only wanted to set off a couple of sticks of dynamite, even if you've got a fairly long cord, a simple battery will do just as well. You know, that little light bulb here. See the battery? Light up that bulb. That's really all you need to set off a blasting cap. Whenever I can, I do try to use this thing because it's just so cool. You know, antique, that still works. There it is. Let's check to see if it'll still work. I'll see why it wouldn't. Maybe I messed with the wires on the armature somehow. Okay, in three, two, one. Perfect. Still works. Good, good. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.